Hi everyone, welcome back to Tony's tutorial and in today's video we are going to have an important step to the future that is we are going to expand our horizon of discussing topics. We often have biomechanics which is our core subject of discussion along with that we had few anatomy topics. Today we are going to start electrotherapy a new subject. To be frank Electrotherapy is one of the simplest subjects to learn. It's so easy. There is nothing to uh, nothing to conceptualize like the biomechanics except a few sessions. What the approach that we are going to have in learning electrotherapy is from the basics. Because you know that regardless of how big a building is, if the foundation is not strong enough, it's not enough, it shakes, it trembles and it collapses. So, in order to understand electrotherapy, to learn it in the easiest manner, we need to know the basics and today's video we will discuss about the basics in electrotherapy. Yes, today we are going to discuss about the basics in electrotherapy. If you are someone who has just finished your grade 12, you will find it very easy because this is the same concepts that you did study in physics. So very basic concept in electrotherapy, we start with the electric current. We try to understand what is an electric current. Before that, let us understand what an atom is. We know that all the matter in and around us is made up of the very single molecule or very simple particle known as the atom. So an atom is in fact made up of, any guess? Yes, the center part known as the nucleus and and outside the nucleus there are electrons which are revolving around the nucleus so inside the nucleus we have two particles they are the protons and neutrons you know them right the neutrons are the name suggests n neutron neutral e charge they are neither positive nor negative then we have the electrons which are outside the nucleus but inside the nucleus, we have one more particle known as the protons. P stands for positively charged. So inside the nucleus, we have two important charges. One is the positively charged proton and one is the neutrally charged neutron. They together makes the nucleus. And outside this single nucleus, there are revolving electrons, which are of course negatively charged. So three important particles in an atom protons neutrons and electrons and nucleus is the center most part of the atom right so from that we broaden our concept before that let's just see some more details into protons neutrons and electrons as i told you protons are positively charged they determine the atomic number in an atom and electrons are negatively charged. In a neutral atom, the number of protons is equal to number of electrons. And neutrons are ne neither positively or negatively charged. Their mass is equal to that of the proton. Let's just have a quick look into a diagram. Here in this diagram, you can see the nucleus, which is the centermost part containing protons and neutrons. And then you have different shells of electrons all around the nucleus. Then say some more clear picture of protons, neutrons and electrons, how positively charged proton and how neither positive nor negative neutrons are attached together or sits together inside the nucleus. So why do we want, to, why do we need to know about electrons, protons, neutrons, etc. Because we know in electrotherapy, we deal with electric current and electric current is nothing but the flow of charges. So electric current is simply the flow of charges. So let us define electric current. So electric current is the continuous flow of free charged particles in a circuit. So electric current is nothing but a continuous flow of freely charged particles in a circuit. These particles are the ones which are to discuss the electrons. So an electric current is measured by the device known as ammeter and ampere is the unit for electric current and it is often described by the letter I. So this is very important. 
nobody nobody is going to ask you define electric current but they might ask you in your why was what is the unit of electric current how do you measure the electric current that is quite very important and when you report some values for example the electric current in a circuit is 10 it's meaningless you need to define it in terms of the unit that is a 10 ampere ampere is the unit of electric current so one of the key concepts that you need to learn in this session is the next one that is the Coulomb's law, which you might be very familiar. It is something that relates to the electric current, the flow of charges. So how do you define the Coulomb's law can be simply defined as opposite charges attract each other and same charges repel each other. That is two protons when they come together they repel each other two electrons when they come they repel each other and when there are there is an opposite polarity positive and negative proton and electron they attract each other you can also define Coulomb's law as the electrical force between two charged particles for example you have a charged particle a and b the electrical force between them between two parts particles for example a and b is directly proportional to the product of charges between this particle for example let it be q1 and q2 the charge on a is q1 charge on b is q2 they are directly proportional to the charges of a charges on a and charges on b and inversely proportional to the square of distance between these two particles that is the separation between a and b if you are finding it difficult to remember it in this manner just forget just remember opposite charges attract each other and same charges repel each other of course Coulomb's law you can write in an equation known as f equal to k which is the proportionality constant into q1 into q2 divided by the distance that is the r square so let's just have a look into the Coulomb's law where you can see from the diagram positive charges repel each other and positive and negative charges attract each other so this is very important there might ask you in viva or ask very short answer question what is Coulomb's law and then we already discussed the concept of electric current now there are two types of electric current can you guess what are the different types of electric current yes they are the static current and dynamic current static current means the name itself describes current that exists when charges do not flow when there is no flow of charges in a conductor or when there is no flow of charges it is known as a static current for example you can rub a silk cloth with a, a rod a glass rod for example that typical example which you might have studied in plus one plus two etc and then the dynamic current which is more important for us when there is flow of charges so all the electrotherapeutic devices we need to have this concept of current where the dynamic current exists which is when there is a flow of charges so the dynamic current can again be divided into two different types again that is the alternating current and the direct current which we are, do use in electrotherapic devices so what is direct current a direct current is the uninterrupted flow of charges in a single direction the DC the charges flow in a single direction and when an uninterrupted current exists and there is bidirectional flow of charges that is known as the AC we will study into different type of uh, direct and alternating currents later in the next video but here you need to have the basic understanding direct current is direct uh, you can remember the term direct there is same flow of the charges in one direction when there is an alternating direction when there is an alternating flow of charges in different direction or bi-directional flow that constitute the AC so that is very important in electricity two type of dynamic currents that is the alternating current and the how we take our discussion into the next step where uh, we uh, often in electrotherapic devices have this important uh, concept that is a concept of resistance so resistance or a resistor 
or resistance of a substance what do you mean by that it just means that it is what do you mean by when you resist something it is that you resist or you do not allow or you oppose something so that means a resistance is a device or the property a resistance is a property of a substance which opposes the flow of charge for example a charge is flowing through a substance what do you mean by it's a resistant resistance means it opposes the flow of charges so resistance is defined as property of a substance which resists the flow of charges and there we have two important concepts which we see across different electrical devices one is the resistor and one is the concept of rheostat let's look into them before that resistance is having the si unit ohm and you need to remember that what is a resistor a resistor is a device which offers opposition to flow of charges that's simple so it just resists the flow of charges what is a rheostat it is a variable resistance it is it often changes the resistance that is off a rheostat is a device which offer variable resistance it is used to control used to control the flow of current in a device so that is the difference between two concepts like the resistor and rheostat which is not much important for us you just need to remember there are resistors and rheostat it's often uh, used in different therapy modalities as per the need of the device whether we need just need to obstruct the flow of charges we use resistor when we need a variable resistance like we need to uh, vary the resistance that is offered we often use the concept of a rheostat so that is most important things that you need to remember about the resistance and there are two type of resistance which you know one is series and one is resistance in series and resistance in parallel so resistance in series means that there is one single flow of charges resistance are kind of attached one to one in a series pattern so the current can flow only in one direction so resistance in parallel means there are different ways for the currents to follow flow and it is not in a single direction or it is not attached one to one so there are many pathways for the flow of charges so that is the peculiarity of resistance connected in parallel so in resistance in series you know that there is one pathway for flow of charges and current has to pass through each resistance in turn for example resistance one two three the current has to go to one then two two then two three it cannot skip or anything like that so that is serious resistance so the total resistance is often known as the sum of r1 plus r2 plus r3 that is a three resistance then resistance in parallel there are many pathways to flow of charges and proportion of current in each resistance depends upon the relative magnitude of resistance you do not need to memorize all these things you just need to remember there are two type of resistance uh, connections for uh, ways to connect resistance the resistors that is the series connection and the parallel important concept that we need to learn is another law that is known as the ohm's law which you might have heard a lot so ohm's law is basically a relationship between three important variables in an electric current or three important variables that are which we are discussing that is a relationship between current voltage and resistance so this they might ask you in vivas or in practical exam or as a short note question so what you mean by ohm's law so ohm's law is a relationship between the three variables that is a current potential difference and resistance and can be described as magnitude of electric current varies directly with the potential difference and inversely with the resistance slow states that magnitude of electric current that is i varies directly with the potential difference that is the potential difference v across the uh, objects or, or across the conductors or across the circuit and inversely with the resistance inversely with the resistance so it can be represented as i equal to v by r so this is very important if they ask you to state a law it's important that you state it in its own form not in your own words so you might need to memorize that statement of the law and then understand and describe it in detail so the next one which we need to describe is yet another law in basic 
electricity that is a Kirchhoff, uh, Kirchhoff's law it may not be as important as the Ohm's law because they may not ask you like what is Kirchhoff's law the chance is very less but still Kirchhoff's law is basically of two one is Kirchhoff's law of current and next one is Kirchhoff's law of voltage so the Kirchhoff's law of uh, Kirchhoff's current law and then Kirchhoff's voltage law. The current law is also known as law of uh, conservation of charge and Kirchhoff's voltage law is also known as law of conservation of energy. So when in a circuit it is having neither series arrangement nor parallel arrangement. So in a circuit if it is not having neither series arrangement or parallel you cannot apply what you call the Ohm's law. That particular cases where we use the Kirchhoff law one is Kirchhoff law of uh, constant current and Kirchhoff law of constant voltage or law of voltage. Let's see what it is. So Kirchhoff law can be described as in a network of conductors algebraic sum of the currents meeting at one point is zero. Algebraic sum of currents meeting at a point is zero or sum of the current leaving towards a junction in a circuit is equal to the sum of the current leaving out of the junction. So it's just simple. If we have a net circuit, so the sum of the current that is coming to the junction, for example, there is one current coming from this direction, there is another current currently coming from this direction. The sum of this will be equal to the sum of what that leaves the junction from that junction the current that is going that is either in this direction and that direction so this sum will be equal to this sum. or it can be represented as algebraic sum of currents meeting at a point is zero absolutely this is not much necessary we just need to understand there is something like Kirchhoff law and if it is specifically important for your syllabus you can just learn the law that's it so at least remember Kirchhoff law is to Kirchhoff law of current and Kirchhoff law of voltage and Kirchhoff law of current is also known as Kirchhoff law of conservation of charge because current represents a charge you can remember in that way and voltage you can say it as conservation of energy. So in Kirchhoff energy law or Kirchhoff law of energy or voltage they describe as the sum of all potential difference in a closed mesh or a closed circuit is zero. So sum of all the potential difference that exist in a closed circuit is zero. That is what is mean by the Kirchhoff law. Of course it has different aspects and we need to discuss. We don't need to discuss that because we just need the basics in electrotherapy. We are not studying physics over here. So this is just the representation where you can see Kirchhoff current law the sum of the currents i1 plus i2 that is the currents coming to the junction is equal to i3 plus i4 and here we have different potential difference existing v1 v2 v3 v4 all the currents the sum of all this potential difference is zero in a closed circuit remember it's in a closed circuit i don't want to stress you much because if this is not important you don't have to study that that's just understand that now we're going to discuss the most important concept in today's discussion that is an electric fuse what is a fuse this is much used in our electric circuits or in electrotherapy devices you can see physically fuses uh, kept over the devices and you need to know the function of the fuse and different properties and they can ask you definitely this question so a fuse is definitely a safety device you know that it's not something that is kept to burst and create damage but it is something that is kept for the safety of the device so what happens is that when the current flowing through the device for example the TV or for example just let, let's take an electrotherapic device for example the tens unit when the current from the main wall main supply increases or all the voltage increases more than the specific limit what happens is that the fuse burst so what happens is that the fuse bursts and it saves the equipment which equipment that is the electrotherapy equipment that which are which we are using or the TV or the fridge or anything like that. So it is a safety device. It protects further damage to the device. That's very important. It for, protects further damage. It destroys itself, burst, and what happens is that it prevents further damage. So what happens uh, when the current flow increases more than the threshold of that? Um, material that the metal that uh, makes the fuse or the material that makes the fuse this increased 
current increase of the heat and as a result what happens is that burst and as a result there is a cut in that circuit so the circuit which is uh, for example if this is a circuit or uh, when this circuit is having a fuse over here if the fuse bursts the current cannot go into the circuit and as a result it cannot cause any damage so it is a safety device it is a weakest point in a circuit because it's a point that bursts first it's a uh, blow if high intensity of the current passes these are the characteristics mostly placed close to the power plant because that is the first part it cannot be kept after the uh, central part of the device because if you keep it over there all the part that is before the fuse also will get burned out or damaged because fuse is only kept, kept after the center part of the device or main part of the device so it's mostly kept near to the um, plug and is, should be easily accessible because you can see in most of their devices you can check whether they have fuse or not and you can remove the fuse and keep, keep the new fuse etc heat generated do not damage the instrument that is the main aim heat generated do not damage the instrument and it prevents damage when current passing through exceeds a certain value and connected in series at the beginning of the circuit so these are the basic characteristics of the fuse and in under the characteristic it has a low melting point because the heat should melt it right it should burst so it has a low melting point and high conductivity and it should be free from oxidization like if it is having rust and so on the properties can change and it should be of low cost because you can't imagine the fuse costing the 10 percent or 20 percent of the instrument and whenever there is a fluctuation of current or voltage the fuse goes and you you don't want to waste too much money so it should be low cost so these are the basic characteristics of the fuse you need to remember all of this remember and there are different types of fuses you can note down them like the cartridge fuse the rewirable fuse, the switch fuse, the dropout fuse, etc. And the most important one is the cartridge type of the fuse. It is very common and we use in our what you call electrotraffic devices. It has uh, R and TV and all the devices you can say a silver line, a silver wire in the center with covered in a glass, a glass tunnel or glass rod, something like that, and two silver uh, caps at the end. So what happens when the heat uh, increases or the current increases this silver wire just breaks it off burst off and as a result the device is saved so cartridge type of fuse is very common cartridge type of fuse rewirable fuse switch fuse here drop out fuse etc the different type of fuse and fuse uh, this diagram just shows the cartridge type of fuse and different type of fuse wires that we are using and here is a representation of the, all the different type of fuses cartridge fuse, rewirable fuse, switch fuse, drop off fuse, MOV fuse etc. You need not and all and different type of fuses you need not remember all of the names but just one or two of the names. These are the different type of the fuses that is a cartridge fuse, rewirable fuse, switch fuse, drop out fuse, MOV fuse etc. So we just add a very simple introduction to electrotherapy. Most of these things may not be needed for your clinical practice or for theory exams, but we just build a foundation. And from them, from this, we will discuss more concept of electrotherapy. Few questions are important. The most important one is like, uh, what do you call the Ohm's law? The, what do you call the Coulomb's law? then about the fuse just remember all of that and uh, we'll see you next time with the next video